The fight over popular artist Thomas Kincaid's estate is going to court. His mistress says she has two handwritten notes proving that she should be given millions. There's a hearing on July 2nd that will determine whether those notes were actually written by Kincaid himself. But she lost the battle to defend her reputation in open court. Thomas Kincaid painted for the masses, becoming the most commercially successful painter in the world. His paintings came off the presses like money, earning Kincaid an estimated $100 million a year before his death in April. His pastoral style holds the key, as he told 60 Minutes back in 2002. Everyone can identify with a fragrant garden, with the beauty of sunset, with the quiet of nature, with a warm and cozy cottage. But it's the authenticity of this handwriting that could decide who controls large portions of the late painter's mansion and fortune. Amy Pinto Walsh, Kincaid's girlfriend at the time of his death, went to court this week with two letters she claims Kincaid wrote before his death. They allegedly leave her $10 million to establish a museum of Kincaid's original paintings, his mansion, and legal authority over $66 million from his estate. Kincaid's estranged wife, Nanette, says she's the sole executor of his will and trust, and Pinto Walsh is a gold digger. We really need to let the judge make his decision. That's the only fair thing to do. And joining us now is celebrity divorce attorney Raul Felder and in Mountain View, California, Julia Protasulik, who has been covering this case for the San Jose Mercury News. Great to have both of you with us. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So, Julia, what does the fact that this is now going to be a confidential arbitration mean for the case of the mistress? Well, it means that some very sensitive issues are going to be decided uh, behind closed doors. Uh, there's two issues. One is a medical directive. Amy is fighting this, saying that the estate violated that. She said that Thomas had given her, when he was sick in the hospital, medical directive over his medical issues as well as the disposition of his body should he die. And the morning of his death, she said she wasn't given that authority, that people close to his family came in and took care of the body and, worse yet, uh, banned her from the funeral. So that's one issue. The other is that the estate says that she violated a confidentiality agreement. And so she can't say anything. And they say that if she were to talk, they fear that she would say horrible things that would defame him. So it seems like, you know, what does she have on him and what is the estate afraid of? And we won't really know that, at least early on, because that will be done behind closed doors. Raul, all this is happening yeah. behind closed doors. What do you make of these letters? I've seen them. They don't look at all alike. Well, well the problem is these letters are worthless. Uh, in, in the 16th century, 1540, uh, they passed the Thatcher of Wills, which is handed down today, which basically says it got to be in writing, it got to be notarized, and so forth. None of this stuff is worth, worth anything legally here because it, it doesn't adhere to the Thatcher of Wills. It makes nice conversation, and I've had them on uh, napkins and restaurants. That's the usual place you find mm -hmm. it. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it makes nice talk, and the reason why the estate wants it uh, confidential is because there's four daughters here and there may be a lot of garbage, uh, but they made a tactical mistake because they would be better off in court. In court, the judge would throw it out, I believe. Mm -hmm. Here, arbitration, you know, you may throw something or, and something may work out. But so I which way, when you say something may yeah. work out, which way does this go? Well, in arbitration, they're more lenient. You know, people sit around the table and they're more friendly and they may work out some settlement to the girlfriend. But if she was in court, they would be thrown out of court. Julia? Well, I spoke with Amy Pinto Walsh's lawyer, and obviously he has a very different yeah. opinion of that. He says that as uh, shaky as these letters look, at least if you look at the handwriting, they don't look like they were done by someone necessarily of sound mind and body. But the lawyer for Amy Pinto yeah. Walsh told me that he's confident that they are legitimate, authentic, and that he will prevail. It's funny, I spoke with a handwriting yeah. expert who said, mm -hmm. after looking at these letters, that uh, Thomas Kincaid either had Parkinson's disease or was three sheets to the wind. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Which we know, be, by uh, the way, that he see. likely and frequently was three sheets to the wind. We do have to end it there. I'm so sorry.
ongoing conversation. Raul Felder and Julia Protasulik, thanks so much to thank both you. of you.